students my name is niyati seet and thanks for watching edupedia word videos my topic for the presentation is the fifth section of the chapter morphology of angiosperms in this section of presentation we'll be talking about the phyllotaxy and the modification of leaves so what is phyllotaxy students phyllotaxy is the arrangement of leaves on a stem and branches phyllotaxy are of three types which are those first is alternate phyllotaxy opposite phyllotaxy and fold or ventriculate phyllotaxy alternate phyllotaxy in this type single leaf arises at each node as you can see this is your alternate phyllotaxy means from one node only one leaf come out or arises from one node the leaf arises laterally on the stem or branches as you can see here in this node and second comes from the second node from the other side okay so this kind of arrangement of leaf is known as alternate phyllotaxy in which the leaf arises laterally on the stem or branches and single leaf arises at each node for example sunflower mango china rose mustard etc now comes opposite phyllotaxy in this type two leaf arises from each node in opposite direction okay see one node it bears two leaf but in opposite direction and it is of two types which are those decussate and superposed decussate when one pair of leaf is placed at right angle to the next or the lower pair of leaf it is said to be opposite decussate for example it is seen in ocimum that is tulsi and calotropis okay see what is decussate decussate means one pair of leaf that means one node two leaves they are placed at right angle to the next lower pair which is this one it is 90 degree or a right angle to the next upper pair of the leaf so that's why it is called as opposite decussate phyllotaxy for example calotropis and ocimum now comes superposed which are those superposed in which node one node bear two leaves okay in this type all pair of the leaves on the stem are arranged one above the other as you can see okay so this is superposed opposite phyllotaxy okay because opposite phyllotaxy has two types which are those decussate and superposed decussate phyllotaxy is seen in calotropis and ocimum that is tulsi plant and superposed is seen in jamun and guava now comes fold or ventriculate phyllotaxy in this type more than two leaves arise from each node okay two leaves more than two leaves they arise from each node and they form a whole like a structure okay it is seen in nerium and elstonia okay so this was all about the phyllotaxy and its type which were alternate phyllotaxy opposite phyllotaxy which is again divided into two type which is decussate and superposed and the third is fold or ventriculate phyllotaxy okay now modification of leaves leaf can be modified into leaf spines in some xerophytic plants xerophytic plants which are grown in dry and arid climate okay or in the desert region okay so in some xerophytic plants like opuntia as you can see this is opuntia the entire leaf gets modified into a spine like a structure a stiff pointed like a structure to check transpiration okay to check water loss what is transpiration water loss okay so spines are meant to check transpiration or water loss from the plant 
Sometimes only a part of leaf such as stipules get modified into spines to protect plants from grazing animals. For example, it is seen in Ziziphus or Acacia. Okay. So the first modification of leaf is spine. Now comes leaf tendrils. In certain plants having weak stem, entire leaf or part of it gets modified into elongated thin cylindrical coiled wiry sensitive structure known as tendril as you can see that it is cylindrical it is elongated it is very thin and it is coiled and wiry like a structure but it is very sensitive too okay so this is the second modification of leaf and that is leaf tendril these tendrils they help the plant to climb up on some support in wild pea, entire leaf is tendrilar. In sweet pea, terminal leaflets are tendrilar. Sweet pea is uh, Pisum sativum and wild pea is Lethyrus. So, in wild pea, Lethyrus, which is Lethyrus, entire leaf is tendrilar. And in sweet pea, terminal leaflets, they are very tendrilar. In Gloriosa, only the leaf apex modifies into tendril. And in Smilex, stipules become tendrilar. Okay. So, this is your second modification of leaf and that is leaf tendrils. Now comes leaf hooks, which is third modification of leaf. In Bignonia, which is also known as cat's nail because look like cat's nail the terminal three leaflets see one leaflet second leaflet and third leaflet and these are terminal leaflets they get modified into three stiff curved and pointed hook which look like cat's nail they cling to bark of tree for support and they help the plant for climbing bignonia is an elegant hook climber okay it is an elegant hook climber now comes phyllode what is phyllode phyllode is the modified petiole okay or rachis of a leaf it is modified into green flat structure for the purpose of photosynthesis the lamina of such leaves are poorly developed. For example, in acacia, the petiole is flattened, green and they form a phyllode. So, what is phyllode? In some plants, petiole, they become very flat. As you can see that the petiole has become very flat. It is green and it is leaf-like and it performs photosynthesis. This is known as phyllode. For example, in acacia, auriculoformis, the normal leaf is bipinnately compound and it falls off soon. The petiole gets modified into phyllode. This is xerophytic adaptation to reduce transpiration. Okay. And it is seen in acacia and rhubarb. Okay. Now, it was all about the phyllotaxy and the modification of leaves. In my next section of the presentation, we'll be studying about the flower. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching Etipedia Word Videos.